Hello and welcome to How to Assign Policies Out of Suspense. My name is Laura and I'm very excited to show you how to assign the policies. So you've already logged in, you're already in procedures, and now we're going to locate any of our clients. So if we do the search where by branch and you put in your branch code and you click find, it's going to find all of your policies that are listed under your branch code. But please still remember to follow up on the downloads that are open on your home page under activities. And if you can't find them under your branch code, you may want to search by their first name. So I've located the client, my first one on my list. I'm going to come down in this area called existing existing clients and policies and I'm going to click this find button. So what I'm doing is I am trying to find the policy that downloaded for August and Darlene from Safeco and find it in the existing policies that I've already entered into Epic. I'm going to click find. It's going to locate the account and policy that I entered into Epic and I'm going to click Select Existing. I have the choice of Add New Policy, Add Line, or Update Existing. We always, always want to update the existing policy that we've entered into Epic. And we're going to do that if we have to do any kind of endorsements, if we are canceling a policy, manually renewing a policy, we are always going to work with that original policy that we entered into Epic. So I'm going to hit Update Existing. Am I sure? Yes, I am. I'm going to get a look lookup code right here, and that's our um, lookup code for that account that we entered into Epic. This policy will download on the next day that we run Suspense, which would be um, every day except for the Saturdays and Sundays. So if you assign the policies out on Friday, it's going to update into this account on Monday morning. If you are assigning out a policy and the update existing is grayed out, that means you need to change the effective and the expiration date on that policy. So if you click the change effective expiration date hyperlink, another pop-up is going to say, um, hey, do you want to change this? And you're going to say finish. And yes, you do. So it will automatically change and update your effective date for you. Now what's here in suspense that was downloaded, this is the correct information. The policy number is correct. Your effective dates, they are correct. So whatever was downloaded is the correct information. If you believe that the effective date should be a different day, then you need to contact the carrier and change that effective date with them. They will then send out another download for you. So you are going to see that these downloads come through. This is a new business. We have renewals that come through, policy changes, any endorsements that you do in the carrier site, they're going to download those changes and the renewals are going to come through. So these renewals are going to come through and this is for 2020, 2021. So what it's doing, it's looking for the previous term. It's going to look for the 19 to 20 term and then it will renew that policy because we always want to work with that existing policy that is an epic. So it's going to renew that policy for you. This is a cancellation. So this XLC is a cancellation. So uh, can policies canceled for many reasons. Maybe non-pay, maybe they moved, maybe you didn't even know that they canceled. So you'll see those cancellations download come through. You'll see them on your activity reports. You'll see them on your cancellation reports. But making sure you're following up on your downloads is going to be key to making sure that all of your reports are updated in Epic. I like to keep the address here on this column at the far right because some of you may have Joe Smith and other agents may as well. So when you're looking at which clients are yours, you know, keep an eye over here to the right to make sure 
that this client um, is within your area, that's their address, just by glancing at it, you'll know. Um, you know, these are Chicago, Illinois. If you're from Arizona, you probably didn't write this policy and the issuing location is gonna give that away as well. When you're done assigning all of your accounts out of by branch, I always like to clear this filter and then do it by your state. At least do this once a week, um, every other week, but try to come in here, go into the issuing location, and put in your state. I'm just going to put in um, Illinois and search through and assign your policies that are yours. So go through them. If you see that there's a policy that's yours, maybe that carrier didn't send out that branch code. And that's another way to make sure that you're following up on your downloads. And if you have any questions, run into any problems, please email training at And as always, be epic.